and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. This tutorial is part of a Node.js, Express, and MongoDB for Beginners tutorial series. I'll put a link to the full playlist in the description below. In the previous tutorial, we created Mongo schemas and models for our MongoDB employees and users collections. We also applied the user model to our REST API's register controller for the register route. Today, we're going to apply the user and employee models to the remaining API routes and update the asynchronous CRUD operations accordingly. And before we finish, I'll show you an easy way to deploy your REST API to the web. We're going to start with the code from the last tutorial. If you don't have it, I have a link to the starter source code in the description below. Let's get started. We're looking at the user schema, and then of course we create a model here at the bottom. That's where we're starting, and we applied it to the register controller near the end of the last tutorial. And you can see we imported in the user model, and this replaced what we had previously in the tutorial series, which were JSON files. Now we're using MongoDB, and we're interacting with MongoDB by using the Mongoose schemas and models that we've created. So now let's apply our user model to the next route. And instead of register, let's just move up one and go to the refresh token controller. Okay, you saw I copied the user model import from the register controller file, and I'm going to paste that right over the user's DB that we had previously defined to interact with the JSON file. So now we're bringing in the user model, and now we can update the handle refresh token function. We'll start out the same here where we define the cookie and of course get the JWT from the cookie if it exists, but then as far as checking to find a user, we have to do that differently. And let's go back to that register controller for just a second, because we did a very similar thing. We used user.find1 and we passed in the name of the user. Well, this time we won't have the username, but besides that, it will be very similar. So let's highlight all of this where we were finding the refresh token inside of the JSON, and let's paste in our user find one, but now instead of the username, we can just put refresh token here, and that's because the property name and the value name or the uh, variable name are the same. So instead of refresh token colon refresh token, we can just put refresh token there. We still need the exec here to execute, and that is because we're using async await, and that means we need to put async up here above, which I almost forgot, so let's put async up here by handle refresh token and make this an async function, and we'll use await here, and then we search for the refresh token inside of a document within the user collection. After that, everything essentially remains the same because we have defined the found user if we found the refresh token or not. And of course, if not, it's a 403 forbidden. But after that, we're using the same definitions as before. So there's nothing else to change in the refresh token route. So we can save the file and move on to the logout controller. Okay, we'll start the same in the logout controller and we will not need the FS promises or path either. So we can just highlight all of that and paste our, well, that's not the user model, is it? So let's change that control Z to undo that. I'll go back here to the register controller where I copied the user model import before. I'll copy that again, back to the logout controller, highlight all of that and paste because that's what we need is the user model imported. After that, we already have the note here on client, also delete the access token. Again, this is the logout route and that's fine. The next three lines, just as before, are fine, and then we need to say, is the refresh token in the database? Well, that sounds familiar. That's just like we used in the refresh token controller. So we come back to the refresh token controller. I'll scroll up where we had our await user find one and passed in the refresh token. Copy that, come back to the logout. This is already an async function, that's good. So now we can once again define the find found user in the same way. And now after that, this remains the same, but now this gets much simpler where we delete the refresh token. We're no longer interacting with any of this JSON here. So let's just highlight all of this and delete, and we can make a few changes. We can say found user dot refresh token, 
and we can erase it simply by setting it to an empty string and then we can set a result and we'll set that equal to await found user dot save and that will save our changes back to our MongoDB document that is stored in the user collection. And after we do that, we could go ahead and log the result if we'd like to see that because that will return the newly updated information. And that's just for our purposes there. You would, of course, delete that before you put it in production. And that's all the changes. So we can save that. And again, uh, remember that found user, this is a document now that we have found if it existed and therefore we're able to update that document with the save. Okay, I'll scroll back up to the top and I'm going to copy that user model import one more time because we need it in the auth controller. Once again, I'll highlight the users DB that we previously had and paste in the user model instead. I'm going to go ahead and delete this line between bcrypt and JWT. We need both of those, but we can go ahead and once again delete FS promises and path, which we should no longer need. These first two lines are the same. We'll keep both of them, but then once again with found user, I think you see the pattern now. Now we're back to looking at a user name though. So we can take this and go back to the register controller where we had the username with find one and copy that line, go back to the auth controller, and then we can paste that in as we find the user and save because the next line is fine as well. And then the password is evaluated and we're not changing anything about that. And really we won't make any changes until we come down here once again to where we were interacting with the file and we will be saving the refresh token with the current user. So once again, we can delete everything we had here down to the response cookie, and let's leave a blank line in between, and then we can once again say found user, which is our document that we have found, and set the refresh token. We're going to set that equal to the refresh token that we now have here in the auth controller, and then let's define result again and let's set result equal to await found user dot save. And that will update the document back at MongoDB. And let's go ahead and log that result again as well. So that should also look very familiar. And that completes the auth controller. So I know we tested the register controller, the register route in the last tutorial, but now we'll want to go back and test all the rest of these. So we've got the refresh token route, we've got a logout route, and of course, we've got the auth route as well. So now let's test those once again with Thunder Client. If you don't have Thunder Client installed, it's an extension for Visual Studio Code. And you get that right here under extensions and search for Thunder Client, and then you'll have it on the left. And this is Thunder Client. It allows you to save collections, which I've already saved to match up to this. But before we can test it, we actually need to start our dev server. I'm going to press Control back tick. You could also go to the terminal menu at the top and choose a new terminal window that way. Then we type npm run dev to launch our dev server. And we should be running on 3500 and connected to MongoDB here in a second when it gives us our information. And there we see both connected to MongoDB, server running on port 3500. So it's now ready to test. So I've saved a collection named auth. And then here we have different routes. If I can see which route we have here, it looks like this is the register route. Let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to click Thunder Client to hide the left hand side so we can see better. And let's look at the body to see what we're going to register. We're going to register a user Walt1 with the password. I believe he's already registered, so we should get a 409 conflict back. Let's see what we get. That's exactly right, 409 conflict. So let's change this to Tom1. I don't believe I have Tom1 in my collection of users. So now we'll send this. And 201 created, so we have a new user created. Our register route is working. Now let's go back to Thunder Client and look at the other routes. That was the register route. Now that we've registered, let's test the auth route. Now let's see who we want to authorize. Well, I believe Walt1 was already created. We confirm that, so we can just send in this information to authorize, and we send it in, and we've got a new access token back 
and everything is okay, he is authorized. And of course, you see down here, we're logging these responses that we're also getting back, these console log statements that had the result. And that's what we see here is the user that we've pulled in is Walt1. Okay, I'm going to pull this down and I'm going to authorize again because if you remember right, uh, we only get an access token the way we have it set that works for about 30 seconds. But really, I guess we're not testing that. So wait a minute, we're not, we're not too worried about that because we're going to test either the logout or refresh token route. Let's test that refresh token route that I have in a separate collection. And so with the refresh token, we're sending a cookie. It says no cookies available, but I think we have a cookie. Let's try it out. 401 unauthorized. We did not get a cookie. I think we're running into our secure site error where Thunder Client doesn't let us test, even though we need that secure site option in there for Chrome. So let's take this out temporarily. I'm in the auth controller as we issue the refresh token. Let's take this out and put it in a comment near the end. In production, once again, you would want this back in there. However, we can't test it with Thunder Client with it in there. So let's go ahead and save now. And once we've got the server updated, let's go ahead and run the auth again, and then we should be able to test the refresh. And now we're up and running, connected to MongoDB, server running on port 3500. Let's try this again in Thunder Client. We'll go to the auth first, hide this over here. I'll go ahead and log in. And we've got a cookie. Let's go to the refresh now and come back before we were unauthorized. But let's see if this works now. And yes, it does. Our cookie works. You just have to take that secure out while testing with Thunder Client. So the refresh route is working. We have tested the register route. We have tested the auth route. We've tested the refresh route. What is left is the logout route. So once again, we'll probably need a fresh login to ensure we are logging out correctly. So let's go to the auth. And now let's see who we're logging in. It looks like Walt1. That's fine. We'll send that. And now let's go to the logout route and come over here in Thunder Client. And it looks like we actually don't need to send anything. It's just going to log out the refresh token. That's right. So we'll just send. And 204, no content, that's fine. We didn't expect any content to come back, but we can see down here because we logged the result, we logged out, there's the route. We went ahead and logged out and we logged out our user Walt1 and we set the refresh token to an empty string. Okay, those updates using the user model were not too bad at all. Let's go back to the file and what we wanna do now is update the employees controller with the employee model. And this will be just a little bit more work than what we had previously had. But we'll start out once again by eliminating the JSON file. And let's go ahead and import our employee model. So we'll have const employee, and we'll set that equal to require. And then we need to go up one folder, find the model folder, and then employee. That is correct. And now let's look at our get all employees route. Well, before we just grab the JSON and return that. Now this will be just a little bit more uh, to do with MongoDB. And of course this will be an async operation. So let's remove this response JSON for now. And we'll define employees. And let's set this equal to await employee.find. And by calling find like this, it will return all of the employees. Then we can say if there are no employees, we're going to return and then we'll send a response with a status 204, which is no content, and then JSON and we'll send a message here. And in our JSON message, we'll just say it's a string, no employees found. And after that, we'll assume we do have employees if we've made it this far. So we'll say response.json and we'll send the employees. And I can see I've got an error. I put brackets instead of curly braces. Go ahead and eliminate that bracket and replace this one as well. And we should be good. So let's go ahead and save this. 
Now let's look at the create new employee function, which will also be async. So let's start here. And with that, we can probably go ahead and change quite a few things that we have in here. So I'm just going to highlight all of this and remove it. And after that, we'll start out with an if statement, but different than we have below. This will be if a request, and now we can use optional chaining to say as a body, and then if it has a first name, because we need all of that, or we can say the same thing about the last name. Essentially, we're saying if there is no first name or last name, and we would expect the request to have a body, but for some reason, if it doesn't, we'll catch that as well. So if we don't have any of those, let's go ahead and send a response here, and we'll return response.status, and this would be a 400 because it would be a bad request. And here's JSON curly braces this time. Message, and our message will be first and last names are required. And you can see we had something very similar below, but it was just a little different than that. So now let's eliminate that as well. And let's just go ahead and delete these lines too. And we'll start over just a little bit and put an extra line there. And we'll do a try catch block. And of course we have the catch after. There's our error. And if we catch an error, let's just console error the error. Okay, but in the try block, now let's define a result and set this equal to await Use our employee model, and now we're create. We'll create a record here, and we'll say first name is request.body.first name, and last name would be much the same pattern, request.body.last name. And I'll put my semicolon here and save. But we still need to send a response. So we'll say response.json. Oh, let's put a status first. And the status here would be a 201, which stands for created. And then we'll send the result back with the record that we have created. Okay, let's scroll down now and look at the update employee. Once again, it will be an async function. And after that, we'll start out a little differently. So let's go ahead and delete. And well, we don't need to delete that line. Let's just delete the top line to begin with. Okay, so we'll start out with if, and once again, request, and let's use optional chaining, body, and now we're looking for an ID. And if we don't have the ID, we'll return response status 400. And after that, we can just give a message in JSON. And let's see if it's the same message that we have below. Not quite the same. So here, let's add a little message different, and we'll say, message and ID parameter is required. Okay, so we've confirmed we now have an ID if we make it to the next spot. And here we can define our employee. So we'll say const employee and set this equal to await, call our employee model and we'll use find one here. And now, remember MongoDB uses an underscore ID. It automatically generates that. And we're going to compare that to request.body.id that is passed in as a parameter. And after that, we need to call the exec at the end to call that function into action. Now let's go ahead and delete the next line here. And we can say, if there's no employee, return status, let's change this to a 204 because it's not really a bad request at this point. It just means that they requested an ID that doesn't exist. They might have issued the request properly. But now let's say something just a little different. We'll say no employee matches an ID. And now let's get rid of this at the end and get rid of the not found part. No employee matches whatever ID was passed in there. Okay, so we're sending our status 204. We'll save that much. Now let's look at this. If the request.body, and let's go ahead and optionally chain first name and last name. 
And then we can say employee first name equals the request.body first name and last name is the same. That's fine. So we're just optionally chaining. That's all we changed there that's different than we had before. And now this gets much simpler here. We're not sorting any JSON data or uh, creating new IDs or anything there. So let's remove all of that and we'll just say const result equals await employee. Notice this is the employee document we've created or we've found. Actually, we didn't create. It's the employee here, not the employee model, but employee.save. And now we've saved any changes we've made to this employee document. And then instead of data employees, we'll just send the result we've defined here and save. And that is our update employee function. Okay, let's scroll up and take a look at delete employee, which should also get a little simpler. But we're going to start out much like we did before. So we'll say if there is no request and we'll optionally chain body and then we'll optionally chain the ID. And we're going to return response.status 400. And that should also be JSON. And here we'll have a message. And our JSON will say employee ID required and put the semicolon there. And now we need to define our employee again, which will be much the same as we had before, really. It's the find one with the body ID. So let's just scroll up here and copy exactly what we had before and come down. And here we have defined the employee ID again. And so then our employee not found will probably be the same as well. So we can copy that and come down here as well and just copy this over and paste. And then after that, we will not be filtering. So let's just remove these lines here once again. And we'll say const result equals await employee dot delete one now instead of find one and here once again this will be underscore id and then it will be the request dot body dot id that was passed in we do not need an exec after delete one and then we will put in the result and if you're wondering why we don't need the exec here. It's just all based on the documents. So once again, look at mongoosejs.com and those docs, and you'll see which different methods you need to put that after and which ones you don't. And finally, let's check the git employee route as well. And we need to put in a check as we had before with the other. So let's check the request. If there's no request dot params this time, and then, of course, we're looking for an ID once again. And we have a similar message at the end. So let's just copy this over and paste it in because that is required. And now we need to find an employee again. So we can copy the same line as we've defined the employee before. And we'll come back down here and set employee equal to the find one statement. If we don't find the employee, well, that's a repeat of this. So I'll just copy this return line here and paste it in here. And then we're already set because we just want to return the employee as we were before, as this is the get employee route or handler just for the one employee. And of course, we're expecting that ID parameter to be sent in. So let's save that. And we have completed our async functions. Let's put async with that as well. And if we didn't with the others, it looks like I also forgot to do that with the delete employee. Let me check the rest. Uh, we need to have all of these functions as async functions. And they complete the different CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete for the employee's collection. Before we test the routes, there is one error to fix. Notice I was using params as we're using a git route to pull that in, but I put request body.id in the function, and this needs to be params.id to access that value that we get from the URL in the route. Okay, so now that we have fixed this and we're now using params, Let's test the routes and we need a JWT to be authorized. So let's go ahead and use the auth route. You might want to change your code to timeout or for a longer timeout duration than 30 seconds. 
Mine is set to 30 seconds, so I've got to be a little fast to test these routes. But let's go ahead and get authorized. Now we've got a new access token. We can jump back over here. I'll open the employees routes. I want to get all employees. And now for the authorization, I need to paste in the new token. And we get our one employee, Walt Walters. I'm going to copy his ID, open the terminal window, and just paste his ID down there because I'm going to need it to test the individual get employee route. So we'll come back now and get authorized once again, collapse the employees API routes and check the authorization, get a new access token. Once we've got the new access token, go back to the employees API, go to the get an employee route, an individual employee, and we'll paste that token in here, and I need the ID to put in the URL. And I'll paste that in and send, and we get Walt Walters back. Once again, now that we're using the request.params.id for this route, because the user ID is read directly from the URL as it is a GET request. Okay, let's get authorized once again, and then we'll come back and test the post. Here is the auth route. Again, we'll send, get a new token. Back to Thunder Client, open the employees APIs. Look at the post an employee. Here's the new auth. Paste that in, look at the body. We've already got Walt Walters. Let's change this to Dave. Walters is good. Now we have Dave Walters as an employee that was created, a status 201, which is created. One more authorization to go so we can test the put, I guess two more, and then the delete as well. So let's go here and authorize once again. New access token. Come back to the put route. And let's see what we need here. Let's put in the access token. And in the body, oh, we need to specify the ID once again. Well, let's, and we change a first name to David. Let's go back, and I believe in the get employee route, I still have that ID that we used before. Oh, and it's still down here in the node uh, terminal as well. So we could pull it out of there. So let's reauthorize. New access token. We will come back to the employees, use put. And for put, we need to put in the new access token. And then in the body, we need the employee ID. So I'm going to paste that in here and we'll change Walt to David. And now we have David Walters, and of course there's already a Dave Walters as well. So the put route works, and now we want to delete, and we'll, of course we'll delete this same user that we still have the ID handy for. So let's reauthorize one more time. Get a new access token. We have the new access token. Copy that, go to the employees routes, Delete an employee, paste in our new access token, and in the body, we once again need the employee ID. We paste in that ID, and we get returned the employee that was deleted. So David Walters is no longer in our collection, but it was returned by the delete route uh, as a confirmation that this employee was deleted. Okay, so from here, what you should do is go ahead and create a user's JS in the routes and then API folder and allow some user information to be requested. Maybe get all users and maybe delete users and set that up so it can be accessed in the route by admin only, such as roleslist.admin, because that's the users. And I'll let you do that on your own, but I will put it in the completed repository that I will post to link below. So there'll be a link to the starter code and then a link to the completed code as well. But before I go, I want to show you how you can easily launch a repository 
And if that repository create or has a node application like this REST API, it will easily be deployed. Okay, there are several places on the web where you can host your node project and even a REST API using Express and Mongo like we've created. I'm going to show you one of the easiest ways to deploy a project like this, and we're going to deploy to glitch.com. So I'm going to put in another bold statement here and say, well, not start, let's just say deploy by clicking the button above. Okay, now that we've put that in, I'm going to copy and paste some code, but I'm going to just change which project it was for. So this code will put a button on the readme of the repository that I share to glitch, or not to glitch, to GitHub. And then when the button is clicked, it will launch on glitch. So here we have to put in the name of the current project. And so I am put Mongo Async CRUD, I believe I named this project. And I'll save. And we can verify here by, I'll go back and let's see, I named this Mongo Async CRUD, that is correct. So I'll open up the terminal window and I'll push my changes to GitHub that I've already initialized the repository. So I'll add the file and I'll commit messages updated readme and I'll push to GitHub and I need a passphrase set up with mine and there we go. I've pushed that to GitHub and so now if we go back and look at the readme for this repository there should be a button that's available and it says remix this and that will allow you to go ahead and launch this application on Glitch. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just click the button. It takes just a minute to load the project and it will be up and running except for one thing. And that one thing is the values that we have decided to put in our .env. Remember the .env file should be listed in your git ignore. So it is not here. And notice the uh, remix button is much larger once it gets to glitch. That's interesting. Okay, so once again, looking at the git ignore, you should have your .env file here. So the secrets that you have stored in the .env need to go in the .env that is provided here at glitch. And you can, of course, click this to learn how to use environment variables. We've already talked about that. So you can add a variable. And here is where you would type like access token secret, I believe is what we named one of ours. And then you would paste in your value for that. You would do the same for the refresh token secret. And you would also want to do the same for the uh, string you put in the connection string that we used for mongoose and mongodb but this is just an example to show you how you can go ahead and launch that so what i'm going to do is leave that button in the readme and i'll put a little extra note in the readme saying remember to add your own values in the env because you can click that button right there in my repository and from there you can bring back up this project in Glitch, and if you create an account at Glitch, you can save it there as well. So that will help you launch any future node application you might create, and this would allow you to put a button in your repositories and launch them as well. And I think you'll like working with Glitch also. I use it for several things. And I should add that once you're on Glitch and you have your project launched, it will give it a name like this, and then you'll have your live project. You could click change URL here and you'll see the URL for your project. So that would be the URL for your API. So that is what you would want to go to for your API. And then the uh, endpoints would go, of course, after this, if you're trying to pull up any specific endpoint. So we have covered a lot in this series. And of course, there is much more depth you could go into as you dive into the docs. But I feel like we've covered the create, read, update, and delete for Mongo and MongoDB. We've built a full REST API with Node and Express. 
and we have added user authentication. We have talked about authorization and uh, JSON web tokens as well to protect those routes. So if we talk about next steps, you would want to take what we have built and what we have built here on the back end using Mongo, Express, and Node could be combined with React for the MERN stack. So if you haven't learned React, you wanna check out my nine hour beginner's tutorial for that. And you can combine that knowledge with this back end course knowledge to complete the MERN stack. However, you could also add whichever front end technology you wanted to this back end with Mongo, Express, and Node for whatever application you wanted to create. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.